we go from SoFi Stadium. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's able to get it across the 20 to the 25-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. And it'll be interesting to see pretty early in this one exactly where his head is because the best quarterback shake off performances like he had last week. Way too many interceptions. Didn't throw a touchdown pass. Team lost the game. Let's see if he can bounce back and get things going in the right direction. He'll be trying to forget those three picks, as you noted. A carry by Henderson to start the drive. And not the start he was hoping for there as he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. From the shotgun, Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Henderson will try and run for the first. Two yards is the pickup, and the Jags are going to have a first down. That didn't get it by much, but they really got the first down. The very next one out, the final is in the first round. To me, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You know, it may not mean much right then and there, but you'd rather not lose it, right? So you want to go ahead and get it, kind of establish something early, and hope it can carry through. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Again, it's Henderson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. From the 39, Lawrence. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Seven yards there and a first down. Now Lawrence. He finds his man complete. That's McKinney. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. The first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that would draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers are getting involved as this game goes on. Henderson now on first and 10. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Up the middle, here's Henderson. And some nice running going to get him down close to a first down at the Rams 29. On third down, here's Henderson. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for. One of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. They'll run for it with Connor. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. Well, that's what's called being aggressive right there, but I don't know that it's reckless. I think it's much more of a message, a hey, defense, I believe in you in case we don't get it, and offense, trying to let them know he believes in them as well. I like it. Your first drive of the game in plus territory, be aggressive. Now Lawrence on first down. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game, like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master surgeon at work. On first down, Lawrence. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Here's Lawrence. 
And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. On third down, Lawrence. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The kick by Bass is good. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. And all in all, a pretty decent opening drive, Charles. Pretty balanced. They had the passing game going and the rushing attack, too. I would think they have to be happy with that start because you get your ground game going, which means your offensive line and your runners are pretty happy. And then you get your aerial attack going as well. So your quarterback and receivers have smiles on their faces. Now both up to speed, awaiting their next possessions for this game. They can't wait to get started again. So now the Rams will get their first opportunity with a football. They'll be led out by a longtime starter in the NFL, a former number one overall pick way back in 2009. It's Matthew Stafford. And his stat line last week, that's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl. All right, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is the victory. He's doing all the right things. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Off of play action. Here's Stafford. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. A couple of vets, Stafford to Robinson there. First down Rams. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open opponent and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have been a different story. Night. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now Stafford goes to his man on the out round. It's complete. That's Robinson. After one on EA Sports. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Stafford's throw here, hauled in by Cup. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. The Rams, they are on the move. They've got another first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you're on a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They'll run on first down with Akers. Foyasade Aluakan made the tackle there from his safety position. And the Rams have eight and four now in the year. And they were winners their last time out, so they'll be looking to make it two in a row. And so much about football, partner, comes down to mindset. Being in the right frame of mind and the best way to get in that good frame of mind, winning. So they come in feeling good. They've got the home crowd behind them. I think they're going to be tough to beat in this one. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 19. Defense was expecting run, and they're dealt a pass of over 15 yards. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, Stafford over the middle. That's hauled in by Cup, And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Here's a run with Akers on second down. 
That play gets him six yards and sets them up with a first and goal. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace it. They'll run here with Akers. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four-yard line. Second and goal from inside the five. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. A great play there. His second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Rams have taken the lead. And nothing special there. They showed they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. It's like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that draw 12 plays in length. And it results in a 40-yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Let's take it in at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville get on offense for the second time here in this game. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Second down, it's Henderson. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Lawrence. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Ten more there and another first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Just a gain of a couple there, and it's second down. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth. <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. On play action, Lawrence. That's caught inside the 20. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. That one goes for 36 yards. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was. I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play. With all reviews coming from the new play official here in the final two minutes of the half. 
did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So that challenge is successful. One. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down and close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Amazing. Perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. Trying to find some space to operate, and now they'll have it a gain of 12, a big first down to get away from the end zone. Partner, I think that play echoed a short yardage run. I know they're backed against their own goal line, but when they stack the defensive line like that, if you find any type of a crease, you're up to the third level before you know it. On first down at Stafford. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now it's Stafford. He finds Robinson. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining at half number one. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Stafford now to throw. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. So we've reached intermission here at a low scoring game. 7 3 is our score. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. Continue on with the check of the next kid stats in that first half for the Jags. And they did not do much at all in terms of throwing the football in those first two quarters. That's going to need to improve if they want to erase this deficit. Meanwhile, for the Rams, they do have found passing lanes to be hard to come by so far. As you see by the numbers, they'll need to figure that out in the second half. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Rams offense ready to begin quarter number three. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. He'll dump this off to Akers. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Stafford on third down. And able to find Higby. It's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big one there on third down. They hit for 30 yards. Dialing up that play call, 
certainly meant that he grabbed a little extra shot of courage on that one because normally on third and short, you're just trying to move the sticks, get the ball just past that line of scrimmage. Instead, they take the big shot downfield, and it pays off. Stafford going to give this to Akers. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They'll go again here with Akers. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Here's Stafford. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field, pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. They'll go with Akers here up the middle. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. On second and goal, Stafford. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Stafford. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Allen Robinson. Halfway to 100 now with career touchdown number 50. And the Rams take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is lets you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you've taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. Taken at the goal line. Well, a dangerous return man showing it here. And he's all the way up across the 40 and down at the 42. Great return. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They make their second half debut here. And things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles. That touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do. And I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because they don't get some kind of points here. That next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Lawrence. Looking downfield for Jones. It's caught at the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Sometimes you just got to marvel at how these guys can throw the football. He gave that everything he had, and it was right on the money. And that might be just what they needed to get back in this game. Sometimes you need a big play to shake things up, get a little life in your sideline, get everyone believing again, and they got it there in a big way. And that throw, pretty impressive, and even 61 yards through the air. They hand off to their big tight end. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. I think this running game, or should I say lack of one, is making this defense look better than what they really are. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. They're going to run this with a tight end. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Third and goal. This L.A. Rams defense will try to bow up once more. Off the play fake. Here's Lawrence. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Ernest Jones, the linebacker, with a sack. 
And that's the kind of stand all defenses are seeking. Third and goal, backs against the wall, and they get a monster sack, and now they're going to force him into a field goal. For them, that's a win. So Tyler Bass on now for the field goal. This is a 26-yard attempt. The kick by Bass is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 now. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Rams offense getting the football back. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Stafford to his number one guy, Cup for Los Angeles first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. On first and ten, Stafford. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Devin Lloyd coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Pushes him over. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right in midfield at the 50. 48 yards rushing for him now to this point. So for second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And he's going to have a Rams first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Play action, Stafford. And that one complete downfield to Cup. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. Give him 30 yards there. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver. And as this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. A give up the middle to Akers. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Going to run the sweep here. This is Cup. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Here's Stafford. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. The Rams 
Adams on third down. Can't be any better than a perfect six for six. This is third and four. To throw is Stafford. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead here to 17-6. So that's CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. Eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Lawrence. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. From the 36, Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another grab. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Lawrence's throw into the hands of Kirk. To throw again on second down. Lawrence. And one more time, here's Kirk. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Well, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Henderson running straight ahead. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Two yards the loss, second and 12. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. On second and 12, Lawrence. And that is incomplete. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And that will be incomplete. Here we go, got to have it, Lawrence. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Rams are going to take possession of the turnover on downs. So now with a two-minute warning coming up fast, that puts a mammoth dent in their comeback hopes. I like how you phrased it. It's a dent because there's still opportunity. They've got to get the ball back on defense, obviously, twice. But guess what? This thing is not close to being over. They need to go ahead and play it out. Not over. As you said, two-score game still. On first down, they'll start out with Akers. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Going right back to Akers. 60 yards on the ground for him so far. Two 
two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Now Stafford. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. Here comes the Rams punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars down by 11. A minute 47 on the clock. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. And that is incomplete here. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Now Lawrence. Able to find Jones. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Now Lawrence to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Here's Lawrence. The pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. He's going to let it fly. And unable to connect, incomplete. Well, give him credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Well, following the play here, now we've got an injury. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. The Rams go victory formation as they take the knee. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. The Rams go victory formation as they take the knee. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Stafford down to a knee and with it, he's going to ensure his guys a victory. And he missed it. He missed it just wide of that left upright. It's no good. And this will remain an 11-point spread. 